They're coming for every second of your life. Indeed they are, Bo. Indeed they are. My name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel 5149 where I talk business, politics, and society. And today I want to talk about the dark side of the attention economy. Specifically, what does our future hold with big tech taking over the world and also the deepest corners of our minds? They're coming for every second of your life. That, that's what these companies are coming to, this company as well. And it's not because anyone is bad. It's not because anyone in this company has evil plans or is trying to do this. They're not even doing it consciously. It's because these companies like Twitter and uh, YouTube and Instagram, everything, they went public and they went to shareholders. So they have to grow. Their entire models are based off of growth. They cannot stay stagnant. The statement holds true, by the way, for all publicly traded companies. They need to grow and they will do everything they can to grow at all costs. For example, Meta's mission statement might be, quote, to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. But everything they do, every employee, good and bad, from senior leadership all the way down to tech support, they all function in service of making this report, the Form 10K, which is a company's annual filings with the SEC where they disclose all of their financial performance metrics to their shareholders as glowing as possible. This is just my observation, but in all of my experience with the corporate world, I have yet to see any performance-based bonuses that are rewarded by anything other than a financially driven goal, whether it be sales or revenue or cost, nothing about building connections. We used to colonize land. That was the thing you could expand into. And that's where money was to be made. We colonized the entire earth. There was no other place for the businesses and capitalism to expand into. And then they realized human attention that we can now, they are now trying to colonize every minute of your life. That is what these people are trying to do. Every single free moment you have is a moment you could be looking at your phone and they could be gathering information to target ads at you. That, that's what's happening. So like as much as we can, you know, as have really good conversations and try to humanize uh, the conversations, the like mechanism of the business is, is, rolling towards that just because of the market. So like, it, it's coming. It, it's coming for every free second you have. Um, and that's dark. That's really, 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 really dark, dark and scary. That is indeed very dark and presents an extremely frightening future. The, the reality that because every inch of land on this earth has already been colonized, 21st century corporations have now turned their attention to colonizing every minute of your life. Companies like YouTube, what you're watching right now, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, they're not at all incentivized by good conversations or by giving creators the ideal medium to, to engage with their audience. All that good stuff happens, but in my opinion, it happens in spite of rather than because of their business model. Their goal is to simply addict you to their platform. I'm going to quote an excerpt from a paper called the Ethics of the Attention Economy, The Problem of Social Media Addiction, published in 2020 by the Cambridge University Press. Quote, users of social media, unlike users of cigarettes, alcohol, or junk food, are not the source of the company's revenues. The revenues of the social media companies come from advertisers, not users. As the familiar slogan goes with social media, you are not the customer, you are the product. That's right, in the attention economy, you your mind is what they want to colonize. Your data is what they want to harvest. And it's killing us individually and collectively. At this point, we know for sure, based on numerous studies and research, that social media apps like Instagram are toxic for mental health, especially for young teens and particularly young women. And rather than connecting us, it's made us more isolated and more tribal. It's also made science less sciencey. Look at this headline there, credibility of science is damaged when universities brag about themselves. This last one I think is an important one to, to highlight and drill into because it's really not talked about too much. But historically scientists would communicate results to their peers in the scientific community. Once properly assessed, verified, or refuted, influential results would gain traction, a process that takes time. Those that were breakthroughs were proclaimed as such to the public and the contributions of others were acknowledged. But the attention economy has changed the ecosystem. Results are now presented to the public as influential well before community assessment can take place. What often turns out to be small findings and or non-reproducible results are hyped as significant enough to share with the public. 
The insatiable drive for attention leads to a framing of results in a way that downplays uncertainty as well as viable alternative hypotheses. It also devalues studies that reproduce or fail to reproduce previous results. Yeah, I think we, we often point to politics as the reason science has been corrupted, and, and that may be a contributing factor, and I think it is, but so is the attention economy. For example, this big affirmative headline from CNN, coronavirus almost certainly came from an animal, not a lab leak, top scientists argue. And then buried in the article, you can find that the study that they're citing is actually a preprint review, one that has not yet been peer reviewed. The truth, we don't really know for sure what's going on, but because everybody is busy trying to capture and control human attention with the singular goal of extracting maximum profit, every societal pillar is in the midst of rotting away, right? Strip all the politics out of it. Don't care what team you play for, but it's a dark future if we can't trust science, if we have little sense of community and the health of our young people have been severely compromised. I don't think anybody in one of these top firms are going to be openly willing to admit this, but I don't think they mind the tribalism at all too much, right? If they can get us to hate our neighbors, focus our attention on each other, that leaves us less time to scrutinize their product, their policies, their backroom dealings with lawmakers. An artist has something in their head or their heart that they got to say and they want to get it out. That's an artist. I have to get this out into the world. You have a short film, let's show it in the park tonight versus the algorithm, which means you wake up in the morning and you see a series of YouTube shorts. People with the mic like this and yellow text right here and they're, they're yelling. Yeah, yeah, you've seen our videos. And it's going, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're, they're coming for us. Who's they? Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. You know I mean? Just like, cut it, cut it right now and make it 30 seconds yeah. and give me big yellow font that in, that's insulting to the audience's yeah. intelligence. But that's the algorithm. You're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. servicing an you're algorithm. for what works. Yeah. You start doing that, you'll be refining crude oil for YouTube, Meta, and Twitter. You're just a guinea pig. You know, that clip was profound for me, right? The, I admit that the title of this video is a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit clickbait, because of course, I, I want you to watch my video. Of course, I want my channel to grow because I believe the message that I'm sharing is important and can make a positive difference. But unfortunately, I'm not really personally willing in many cases to play the game, which puts me at a significant disadvantage against those who are willing to play ball and have to be okay with that. So this is super interesting as a standalone, like the fact that we are now gonna have a Black Friday football game on Thanksgiving weekend and people like myself are super fired up. But there's a much bigger, more important macro thing here that's brewing that I think is gonna really dominate the next decade. This game is being played during a massive retail day, the biggest retail day, by the biggest retail platform on the internet. I think the next decade is gonna be defined by this concept of content and commerce mixing together. Influencer affiliate programs, the Walmarts, the Kroger Albertsons M&A, the, the Amazons, and then the social platforms like Facebook and others actually buying retail companies or getting deeper into retail. Content and commerce are in a crash course and it's gonna change the economic landscape of the next decade. Just a little bit of what the future might hold. Point is, I don't think we should be surprised when society is seemingly falling apart around us if the best and brightest from low, mid, high level software executives and, and engineers are being paid very good money to figure out how they can keep us on their platform for another five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, just to sell us more crap, even if it means sacrificing people's mental health, sacrificing community, sacrificing science. With that being said, we should also realize that technology without a doubt has democratize information and it has eliminated barriers to distribution. And those are huge breakthroughs in terms of uh, decentralizing power. But at the same time, we have to be very intentional about how we use this power, how we interact, how we use these platforms. And we have to be very intentional about our attention because if we're not careful about it, the overwhelming pressures of the shareholder model will inevitably force all of these companies to re-centralize all of this power in service of the almighty dollar. That is it from this week. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts about all of this. So please fire away in the comment box below. Also, if you enjoyed this video about the dark side of the attention economy, please like this video, share it, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. 
with intention, of course, which is why I always end every video by thanking you for your time and looking forward to the next time when I'll see you again.